Today on this video, we're going to rebuild the cam chain tensioner on a Honda VFR 2002 UP VTEC motor. Also works on CBRs, mini CBRs, and VTRs, Superhawks, and the like. So stay tuned, I'll show you step by step how to take care of it, and it's really pretty easy. All right, let's go over what you need, all your tools, everything. So here at the uh, Mac Adventures workbench, we're going to go through the whole procedure. One, let's get out the tools you're going to need. Your cam chain tensioner should come out of the motor just like this, collapse because you put your little tool in. I'm going to first show you the tool. And we're going to let this release its pressure. It's OK. All right. I made this out of an old screwdriver. If you get out your manual, you can see the dimensions, but roughly you're about three and a half millimeters here. You're about 19 millimeters deep, and that's just about the width that'll fit in between these two slots right in there. If you see that, it just kind of slides in right there. So you can kind of eyeball that. I forget to measure it, but uh, let's take a look here and see. It's roughly looks like about seven about eight millimeters so eight millimeter 19 millimeter about three and a half to four millimeter right in there let's do we'll just double check that one that is um, three and a half millimeters so three and a half eight millimeter about 19 millimeters the shaft right here above it doesn't really matter too much as long as you make it narrow around one to one and a half millimeters wide so I'd have to do that in 30 seconds of an inch I'm just going by the ma the manual uh, it shows you how to make one because when you buy this it comes with the tool it's a little key that comes with it but since I'm going to show you how to rebuild your existing one or save us about a hundred dollars per well you just make your own and you have your permanent tool to use future also a small pick for taking off a circle clip and I use a little watch uh, screwdriver for doing some of my adjustments in here just makes it a little easier see how that works there uh, of course probably you don't need this this is just a little micrometer I have like a little hand pocket micrometer you are going to need a drill though because I'm going to show you how we're going to drill something that's going to cause uh, not cause but make your unit work perform better at the, towards the end of the video all right let's get to it so we've got our tools here we've got our unit we're going to take our gasket off. You can take your bucket off if you want. You don't have to. And here's your plunger assembly. Now I'm going to disassemble this completely so I'll let you know how this thing works and what's inside of it. Uh, you don't need to disassemble it completely to uh, repair it. I'll show you uh, when we get to that portion what you really all, all you really have to do. There we go. The clip is off. Your spring is going to pop out and unwind there. There it just did. So here we go. And we have a spring down in here. You don't have to take the spring off if you don't want to. Mine's got a little bend in it there. When I was doing this the first time, I tightened it too much and pulled it. But that's okay. It won't affect anything. And if you look at right here, you have this portion going across. That actually fits into here. Let me show you that. When this is inserted, that fits into there, and then you make your adjustments to tighten. Now it has a small retainer for the end of the spring on this side. That's going to go, if you look at the groove, right there. Right there. It drops in there. Just like that. All right, take your screw and you're going to put that down in there. All you have to do is turn it until it drops into place. Now to test it, twist it and let it go. Yep, see how it spins? There you go. Now you know it's inside that groove. Then you take your collar, put that back on, and then you're going to take your adjuster here. Now the adjust, not excuse me, the adjuster, the plunger. The plunger has a locking collar that stays on it can't come off and if you'll notice these have some large grooves here and small grooves here same thing will match there there's a small and there's large so I put it in 
tighten it down just a, I mean, uh, screw it on just a couple of turns, and then I'm going to drop this into place. So let's drop it right into place right there. And then you hold it, and you can take your tool and put in here. And I like to start with, if you see right there, I put a little black mark on my tool so I know every revolution. In this case, when you're rebuilding it like I took it apart, um, you're going to go to the factory, which I think is four turns. Let's see here. One. Oops. Hold on a second. Let me get that in there just right. There we go. One. Two. Three. Cut. I messed that one up. You have to splice this portion right here, okay? All right, that was a cut. All right, once you have it disassembled, let's go through your parts here. So you have your gasket, you have your cup that goes on top of your plunger. You have the plunger, which has a retaining ring that can't come off. It stays on this groove right here. You have the screw, you have a collar that goes over the screw, like this, inside, and of course you'll have your spring. Now your spring, uh, it's like a slinky. So this spring has a retainer right here. If you see that retainer, it goes in that groove right there. If you notice, there's no other grooves it could fit into except that one right there there and it slides right down to there should look like that you guys can see that there at all all right now you take your adjusting screw you put it down in here and you just turn it until it drops onto that spring there we go it just dropped in and to test give it a little twist and then let it go and yes you can hear the spring actually rotate back and you can feel this rotate back also so you know it's inside that groove of the spring now you uh, or the springs inside the groove of the uh, adjuster nut now you take and put your collar on which so the collar protects the screw adjusting screw from the spring and then you take your plunger and screw it on maybe oh, one turn there Let's see, let's get this to where it goes into its right position. If you notice, these are different sizes. There's a large tab and a small tab. So you put that in there, hold it down with your fingers like that. Take your tool. Actually, at this point, I just usually use this. And if you notice, I have a black mark on there too. I'll put it in there. There we go. And when you're tightening this, what will happen is it will actually take and screw up uh, you know, the plunger will screw down in. So let's do that. One, two, three, four. So you take that, and I just kind of hold it. I'll put my locking tool back in there, and it locks into place. So this is the way you should have got it out of the motor. It would come out with that in place and that in place and of course your spring clip would be on there. Now I'm going to leave the spring clip down because now we're going to get into the adjusting or rebuilding part. What is that? We're going to take our collar and we pop it up out of its retainer. See there? Now we take this and we unscrew it. See how it's going out? This is the tightening portion of uh, the spring. So we've done that. Now I put the retainer back inside of its assembly. And I'll hold it with my fingers. And effectively, it really locks this spring in place. Now I'm going to adjust this and tighten it. See I have a little black mark right there again. I'm going to, I'm going to count those. So there's one, two, 
three and a half. Now if I want more, I'll take the collar, I'll pull it back up, get that back up there, there we go, screw it out a little bit more, and let's tighten there just a little bit more. Hold that pressure on the plunger so you won't your spring won't pop back out. There we go. Bring your tool out, put it into where it's not locked in place anymore. One and a half. So I got one and a half. Now it's fully rebuilt or readjusted. Leave your tool in there. It's ready to go back in the motor. It's that simple. So let's go through it again. One, take this off. Now it's assuming it's already in, come from the motor. You didn't disassemble it. You take off the spring clip. You move this collar up. You pull out your plunger. And then you would adjust it to as many turns as you feel is necessary. Usually from the factory, if you fully disassemble, it's four turns. And the tightening would be you pulling this up, unscrewing it, bringing it back down. That's usually another four turns. So that's pretty much rebuilding. If you have any questions, anything like that, uh, send them down below there. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. I'm going to put my C-clip back on here, real quick, or my, not C-clip, excuse me, my spring clip back on. There we go. It's back on. Now it's ready to go back in the motor. This came off the front bank, which goes in, comes almost in and out vertically. Let me show you a couple of tricks here you also want to do. The hole that it comes out of is pretty much that size. And what happens is the side of the motor can grab this cup and pull it off. And guess what happens? You're trying to pull this out. And guess what happens to that cup inside the motor? So, don't fret. All is not lost. It can't go down into the inner workings too deep. If you look at a side cutaway of the motor, let me see if I can, if I have one here, I can show you guys here real quick. Uh, side cutaway of that motor. Here we go. Side cutaway of the motor. There's your little bucket right there, your little, your little cup. So what happens is it falls between the motor housing and the top of the chain guard right there, chain adjuster right here. So when it falls down, it stops about right there. So you take this housing off, your outer you know, clutch, and your, it covers your timing chain uh, port right there. You take that off, you push your finger up right here, or you get a small screwdriver, and you can push that cup back up and catch it with a magnet and bring it up out of the hole. So don't turn the motor over of course, that could be devastating. All you have to do is when that cup falls down in there, well the worst case is you're just going to put a fish a screwdriver, I mean fish a magnet down in there and then try and pull it back out. Now the diff difficult part is that cup needs to come out this way not sideways. So reposition your magnet in the middle and you can pull it right through the hole. All right, let's do one more thing here to talk about. It's going to be your gasket. I said you need a drill earlier. You need a drill because the gasket hole that feeds the oil port of the adjuster from the factory is 0.5 millimeters. It's extremely small. So what I've done, according to some guys on the line, I've got all this information from VFR Discussion Forum, vfrdiscussion.com. Go to those guys. There's uh, I got the rebuild from VFR QQQ. I got the gasket information from Spud 786, SPUD 786, and basically he opened his up to about 2.75 millimeter. I got mine at about 2.25 millimeter, which is roughly a 3/30 seconds drill bit and I drilled, this is a metal gasket, and I drilled that hole in there and opened it up. 
and that should give you better oil penetration within the inner workings of the cam chain tensioner and hopefully help it last longer. Another, another quick tip, this is from me, is take a pair of screwdriver, a pair of pliers and take your cup that goes over your plunger head and tighten it, or you squeeze it just a skosh, just a little bit to make it a little bit tighter so it stays on there so when you put it on it doesn't come back off very easily so you're going to have to really pull it to get it off so that's a quick tip from me and you do those two things and you should have this working uh, much longer because I'm from the opinion that these don't really go bad unless the spring snaps all they do is just need to be retightened all right, guys, so thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out. I hope it saved you some money. I know Honda mechanics are going to hate me for showing this trick and things, but uh, it really does work. For, uh, you know, typical cam chain rattle you can get about, uh, it generally happens on VFRs between 20 and 30,000 miles. Mine's got 33,000 on it. It's a 2002 VTEC, so um, you could replace it with manuals. Um, yes, but the manual ones are 40, 50 bucks a piece. Well, these are 70 bucks a piece, so. I don't know. I thought uh, I'd find out if I could rebuild it, and I basically can. Actually, not rebuild your. I keep saying rebuild. I'm sorry, readjust. Because unless something's broken, you don't need to replace it. You just need to readjust the spring and retighten it. And what should help a lot is this oil journal, opening it up a little bit to give you um, better oil penetration inside the inner workings of this cam chain tensioner. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll be happy to answer if any ones I can. Remember, I'm not a professional mechanic. This is Mac Adventures Backyard Mechanic, and this is my table here inside my office area. And I just like to tinker around and uh, save me some, myself money, and hopefully I'm saving you guys some money. Thanks a lot for watching. guys after rebuilding and re, uh, you know readjusting the cam chain temperature tensioner I want you to listen here no more rattle fix temperature is 195 196 it's got uh, Castrol 10w40 motorcycle oil in it Ready to go. Anybody can do it. Thanks for watching, guys.